And this is where the story begins. First, let me tell you about Speed Project. Speed Project has unsanctioned relay race from Santa Monica Pier to the Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign. You have to know somebody to know somebody to get in. No more than 50 teams are allowed, and there are no rules. So this whole thing of no rules, no map, is because this is your course, this is your experience. Do whatever the hell you want to do. But they did give us a course map, which I guess kind of serves as a guideline. Huh? Both Steve Finley and I felt like we should live by the words of Hunter S. Thompson, was to dress up like human peacocks and get crazy, then screech off across the desert and cover the story. And so we did. Nike had a team, Adidas had a team, Hoka had a team. But the team we were covering was Team XX, AKA Bang Bang Girl Gang. All have ties to Brooklyn, New York. The gang was made up of three Olympic trial qualifiers, an architect, a marketing whiz, and a world traveler. Together, they were on one accord to beat the Speed Project's women's course record. Arriving into LAX via JFK, they were ready for anything. These are the travels, moments, and thoughts captured somewhere between the Pacific Ocean to Mandalay Bay. Let's go Bang Bang Girl Gang. The appeal for me to do Speed Project again this year had to do specifically with the fact that we were going to go back with this crew. To me, the Speed Project amplified this idea that a collective goal is more important than that of an individual, and our mission was to break the all-female record. So it was really exciting to get this specific crew together, women that I knew and that I already looked up to and was inspired by in the running community. And I knew that all of us were dedicated and competitive and that would really go for it. Give me together everything. Hey. Good morning. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm thinking, thinking one stage at a time. So hopefully we can knock out the first 100 miles and see where we're at. It's supposed to be like 58. Total per per lady, so 340 miles. I don't know. My math's probably wrong, but I'm sure somebody will run more than 60. Uh, should be an interesting day tomorrow. I keep forgetting that there's going to be a second day. Yeah, like really? two, one, two, three, four. What do you think? <laughs> uh, Might as well try four, right? Sure, if you just want to waste all Cajun's time. Okay, let's I try love four. You. Everybody strapped in? Yeah. Let's roll. First roll broken. <laughs> we just blew by that stop sign. <laughs> hey, big moment. <laughs> We've made it to the start. How's everybody feeling? All six intact. God help us. We got here before four. We got here early, I would argue. And uh, there's just way too many people standing around blocking traffic. Uh, yeah, lots of lots of content happening. Gotcha. <laughs> Our first legs are about to go off. Who's the first leg? Leanne. She's Fine. Hope she didn't go out in six minute pace, but uh, she does that sometimes. So. Established. Good job, guys! Killing it! Two. What leg number are you? Number two. I'm like number two. Second runner of the day. 100 miles ahead for me. No, 60. <laughs> it's gonna be a great adventure. Look at this one.
people went out harder than I thought they were going to. Dang. So then I went out harder than I wanted to, but it was fun. Six minute pace. <laughs> Only for the first mile. Oh, man. Like six ten. Uh, it's fine. Yeah. I'm kind of moving. And then eventually I take a right at a Chevron. Is it actually right at the Chevron? Do you remember? So I just like went up the street. Oh, it was up here like this. And then I go. So it was okay. It was fine. But I, pre I freaked out. This is useful actually to like have it with you. But you don't. Yeah, no. <laughs> like running with someone from the the Austin crew. I think he just got a little turned around. I knew we were going the wrong way, but I didn't want to disagree with him. Should have done it. I did a bad job. Sorry, right. only uh, 54 miles to go. What was your average mile? My pace? Yeah. 609. Gene, what was your average? 5.55? 15. That's not bad. That's not bad. Did you say on yours? Woo! Oh, 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 I started in the dark and now the sun is up, so we're good to go. Hey, stay on Truman, you're doing great. Deception, thankfully. Um, yeah, it was a good leg. Just cruising here behind Kadra. Her first leg. Sun's up. Everything's going all right. Ladies are doing well. Uh, that was a little wild. There was no shoulder, so uh, and a lane was closed, so I was literally like running next to cars. <laughs> That was horrible. That uphill great job. was yeah, crazy. That was a brutal cut. <laughs> I was like, I think I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> Where's Leanne? Yeah. Oh, Leanne. Now that I can see you. Now it's with uh, LA Re Rebels coming in. the road that I had to turn on that now I know means Lonely Canyon and I, w I felt very lonely on this road. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is 
look just good though when we pass you. You look good. Six mile hill. Oh, very good. Oh, yeah. Hey, good work. That's why we marathon train. By we, I mean you. These guys are being super conservative. As long as they're doing what they need to do, hopping in the boots, keeping up, I think uh, they might catch some of these guys later on. Hey, you almost made that guy crash his motorcycle. You should watch Way out, Gene. That's our friend, former pro runner for Hoka, Craig Lutz. He seems to think he's lost. Excuse me, little boy, are you lost? Wasn't 100% sure. <laughs> Didn't feel good enough about it. Yeah, we, we weren't sure either. Yeah, it's crazy. Runner. Who knew? Ah. The demons in the eight, but they can catch the teams before them. As you can imagine, with eight people packed in an RV like sardines for two days, every now and then, things are bound to get a little silly. And we're just off-roading back in the desert. Gonna throw some donuts around here soon. Oh, how's life on its own? It's all because Ari, she doesn't know how to drive, you know? People who live in Brooklyn normally aren't very good drivers. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now we're just gonna... Brown, I thought she was gonna go backwards into the ditch. Oh, sorry everyone. <laughs> Is anyone sleeping? <laughs> Look at that, three point turn, motherfuckers. That was beautiful, nice three point. Move this thing around, especially with, you know, all the pressure. I want Marta to notice that I'm driving, but <laughs> she's not. <laughs> I'm just like lurking right by her. Marta! <laughs> Okay, good job, girl. Yeah. That was by far my favorite leg. She's 
just like peaceful and sunset and cooler, so kind of got into a rhythm. This is 24 right now, I think. Yeah. The three teams in front of you, they're all together. Yeah. Cool. So cool. if you catch them, you catch all of them. Yeah. We wow. catch them, we sit on their asses. Think about it this way: they've they like cut the beginning. They've now cut the middle. But then, and been, now you guys well, okay. are still. Caitlin just ran seven miles at yeah. six flat pace. So. That's what I'm saying: is that like they <laughs> took off at least ten oh, miles, boy. and we've already we're like within four yeah. miles of them, so we can make up some ground. I have donuts. Okay. We still have donuts. Like I'm done by you know, like, yeah, like just be smart. Like it's gonna I'm be dangerous like, a little bit no matter what. It's dark. Like this is not like. A sanctioned race. Is it about Hi. sleeping? About sleeping? Hi. Yeah. Coming? Yeah. Yeah? Because they were going to We'll see if we can catch some of these guys that are, uh, you are now. Uh, hacking the course, <laughs> making it a little bit more of a fair fight for the ladies. Really, our only goal right now is to try and catch the all women's yeah, tempo like, team, which is about four miles ahead of us. But there you go, race Leanne to the donut spot, which is usually harder than it sounds. From midnight to 4 a.m., I fell asleep. And apparently, I missed a lot. I called up a few of the members of the gang to get answers. What the hell happened when RJ was sleeping from 12 a.m. to 4 a.m.? Hmm. Oh my god. So much happened. It was crazy. What happens in the van stays in the van, RJ. I'll just say that it was like probably the wildest chunk of time. RJ, we were running and sleeping. That's it. I got dropped off in the middle of nowhere all by myself, only with the paper map. And then I realized my cell phone was still in the RV. So the only thing I had to trust was myself, the map and the headlamp I had with me. And hope I just got the right direction and find the RV again. I was being a bit of a baby because I was running trail segment at night and not really knowing what to expect. So Finley decided that he would join me. We jumped out of the trailer and we're like, okay, we'll see you guys at the other side. We ended up not being able to figure out which direction we were running. The only thing I remember is that I think I stepped on you about 50 times getting up and down from that over hanging bed above the driver's seat and you didn't wake up once Ugh, uh, yeah i think you just had to be there and you know like awake of course too and that's what i apparently missed You're at mile two, Gene. Caitlin Phillips continued to murder, we were headed down Old Spanish Road in Death Valley, the iconic road that would eventually get everyone twisted at some point. The sun's coming up again, you're in Death Valley, and it's like, we still have so many miles to go. It's kind of a daunting thing that all of this still lies in front of you. We all know that recovery is essential in running, and I think that it is the one thing that you're not gonna get at the Speed Project. 
if it was straight, if it was flat, I think it would be bad. It looks so hard, but I, can't, I couldn't do that climb very well. I mean, it's not even the fact that it's a hill. It's the fact that it's windy. It's windy. It's a hill after we've already run like a full marathon each and haven't slept. And it's hot and windy. Oh, really windy. Anyways, uh, time to put back on my positive outlook here. <laughs> Come on, Leanne, you got it. It sucks, but I'll be back out there in a sec. <laughs> in a jiff, I promise. I feel like the uphill is actually like making my legs wake up. Fucking silver lining. Woo. Here you go, Marta. But the wind, I think, makes it way worse. Like, if the wind were even coming from the side, it'd be okay, but it's a headwind and a hill. Difference between yesterday and today <clears throat> is that we're a lot closer to Las Vegas. Uh, what a nice response. I mean, Ula and John Connor, God bless their souls. There are our eyes and ears out here on the road. After watching Jean descend the mountain, Ula proclaimed that uh, she is running faster than the large males who are on the team directly in front of us. Each mile the gang chipped away, they were getting closer to Las Vegas. However, the fatigue was starting to take over and the recent news through the grapevine was enough to knock the wind out of their sails, just for a moment. A couple teams, I guess, cut off about 30, 40 miles, which is cool. Uh, we did not decide to do that. There's a couple that did do uh, the route that we're doing that are just up ahead. The low light was definitely finding out that Tempo team was about to finish the race. For many hours, we had been chasing them, nearly catching up to them. We were all very pumped to be able to finally race them. I remember chatting with Blue very briefly. I remember asking him if they were able to get in contact with one of the other all-female teams. He replied with, I heard some teams are getting creative and changed the conversation. That was the point I knew something was happening that was out of our control. So when we found out that they had an alternative route that reduced their mileage, and that it would be impossible for us to catch them, he really brought us down. You know, a little defeating and discouraging to realize like there's nothing to do except keep going. We just had to like put our heads down and keep running, even though we were pretty sure we probably weren't going to get our A goal. But then I guess in a way it kind of became another highlight because we did just kind of keep moving and like keep continuing to run really fast. Like it didn't change anything about the way we continued to pour our hearts out. From the pier, to Barstow, to the remaining miles outside of Vegas, their hearts remained heavy. They carried on, heads held even higher. Mile after mile, this 340 mile race wasn't just about competition or the record. It was simply about dreams, friendship, and above all, respect. To steal the words from the character Raul Duke, there was a fantastic universal sense that whatever we were doing was right and that we were winning. There it is, Las Vegas. Legs are feeling good? No, not exactly. Spirits are good. Spirits are high. Aaron's positivity is just drowning everybody. It's taking everybody and drowning them in positivity. Unsolicited positive vibes. But appreciate it. Lots of, lots of people on the highway honking at us, which I can only assume means that they're in support of what we're doing out here. We're about to deal with some more of that now as we merge off of the highway. Everybody hold on. We're going in live. There's one mile left. Woo! Good, Good job, job Liam. We only have one mile left of this race. Good job. It doesn't feel like we only have single digits left. It feels like we're gonna take a corner and it's still gonna be like 80 miles down the road. Yeah! Mile 61! Get it.
it over. So we hit that sign as soon as possible. <laughs> Finish line is kind of behind you. Is it? Oh, my God. Yeah, All right, here we go, everybody. Miles left. Crossing highway now. Last hill. I was like, no. Damn it. Sorry. 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 There was no parking on the no, other side. No, I know, I know. course record but I still couldn't be any prouder of what we did out there it's like honestly one of my proudest running accomplishments to just know that we were able to keep going the experience wouldn't have been the same without the people that came along for the ride the team and the unlimited sacrifices everyone was willing to do for the rest how often do you get an experience like this where it's not about you, it's not about an individual, it's about six people. It was kind of beautiful being in this kind of somewhat arbitrary race where it really took me back to why I started running, which was just, you know, for the sake of like being outside and being able to challenge myself. We wouldn't have been anywhere close to what we achieved without one of those people. And being able to share this with them made this experience absolutely incredible. We did this thing 344 miles in 39 hours, 33 minutes. Yeah, we're amazing. Boom! Mm-hmm. <laughs>